Aloha Noah. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Oh yeah, aloha, no problem. So, you know, like I um like I explained to you earlier, we've been working with the materials of Koloko Kamaile, some of his writings that he's left behind from us. And there's this um you know, listing of bird names that are really interesting. And so I wanted to ask you a few questions about that. Yeah, sure thing. Yeah. Um, you know, you're taking a look at the, um, it's right in front of you, right? And I gave it to you prior. So this is the um, article that printed in Kanupepoku Okoa that's dated November 6th, 1914. Its title is Nainoa o na manu na limu ame na hakai. Mm. Right? So this is the one we're talking about. Would you consider this a taxonomy? I would consider it a kind of taxonomy, yeah. So that's um, what we would call it in English. Yeah, yeah. A taxonomy. So what what is a taxonomy? Taxonomies are systems of um, organizing things, um, mm. information in general. So you can have taxonomies of place. You can have taxonomies of species. You can have huh. taxonomies of the items inside of your bedroom or, you know, your kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, a, it's just a way of organizing things in the world around you. Yeah, usually, yeah, information. Um, most often when we talk about taxonomy, we're, we're talking about the, the organization of species okay. into a way that we as humans can understand them. So and it's scientific, it's a, it's a common method. It's a common method. And, in science. And in, when we talk about Western taxonomy and the way that we use taxonomy you know, in Western society, um, we're usually talking about something called Linnaean taxonomy, okay. which is the organization of all living things. And, I see. And the way that we organize things in Linnaean taxonomy is um, by the way that we think that they're related to each other. Oh, I see. So it's not just a list of things, but it's a list of things as it relates to what's in the list. As it relates to what's in the list. Now, you don't have to organize things um, by the way that they're pili ohana to each other, the way by the way that they're related to each other. Um, you can organize them in other ways too. Um, like you could say, um, I, all of these animals I'm putting together in a group that I'm going to call orange animals because they all are orange. Oh, I see. And you might have a fish there. You might have a parrot there. You might have some kind of orange bug there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that you, you you choose the groupings. Yeah. You use, you choose the groupings. Okay. So the purpose is let's. So the purpose of taxonomies. So what in, I'm understanding you saying is is to organize information to organize ike. Yes. Right. So and we should read into these lists to look for these commonalities, like you're saying, the groupings that the author might have intended. Yes. Right. So when you think about taxonomies like this one that we're looking at that Koloko Komaile authored, um, you know, what might have been the purpose of something like this during his time? So we got to think about, well, one, Koloko Komaile is a Hawaiian. And Correct. He's a native Hawaiian who is one of those last individuals, I want to say, mm -hmm. who is really educated in things about old Hawaii. Right. So that's a particular perspective that he has. And also that this is written in 1914. So there's, you know, certain things that he's learned along the way because mm -hmm. of the how, how late he's living as well. Um, I think Koloko Komaile has a lot of purposes in this. Uh, one of them, clearly, he, he sees a need to preserve information. And right. he's showing us all of these things that he knows in these categories of manu, limu, and i uh, ia pili kahakai. Right, and I know that he um, he specifically wrote much about his homeland, Napo'opo and the surrounding areas in Kona on in Hawaii. In Kona, yeah, on Hawaii Island. So um, I can see just how that residual uh, repository of information that he's left is lining up to what you're saying. Now, how is that different than the way? or purpose, or the way we use taxonomies today? The way Koloko Komaile chose to divide up these three big categories, mm -hmm. birds, seaweed, and fish that live near shore, that says something about the way that he sees the world and he sees living things, mm -hmm. and how, how there are different groupings of living things. So one thing that's interesting about the bird category, which is the only thing I can really speak to myself, uh -huh. um, is, you know, we have the Hawaiian word for birds is manu yeah? right uh, but and in an older sense a manu is not just the thing with feathers that we call birds today mm -hmm. 
Manu is anything that can fly. Oh, wow. And so you can kind of see that actually in his list of Manu here. Some of these are actually not what we would call a bird. Like, oh, really? Like what? Um, there's Oka'i, uh -huh. um, which is a moth. Oh, yes. Um, that's the big moth. Those are big moths. Big moths. Yeah. So those are things that can that can fly, but they're not... They're not necessarily they're not birds. the way we, we think We wouldn't of birds. consider them birds. Yeah, yeah, but they're Manu. They're Manu. And um, that that shows a little bit of the the old way of thinking that he, that he has to categorize all those things together. Well, I see Pinao on here too. Oh, yeah, Pinao. Yeah, dragonflies. So that's an example. That's another example. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of these names. We don't know exactly what they are today because we don't have the records to that um, to line them up with particular kinds of animals so they there may be other things that are flying invertebrates you know like insects mm. and things like that um, or there may be things in here that we consider traditional birds but we don't know or there could be some other kind of flying creature too i have no idea um that's an exciting possibility yeah. now um i think is it possible that even we don't even know like some of the names of these, the Hawaiian names of these, we couldn't necessarily match them up exactly with the scientific names. I mean, I would imagine that that would be difficult to do yeah. based on what we know now and what maybe what his intention is. So th there's a chance that we might even match these up, the species up wrong, correct? Yeah, th so... So this is interesting. So like I mentioned, there are things in here we don't know what they are. Um, one example is... Uh, Lupe aleke. Mm. Um, I, I don't think that there's no record I know of that explains what a lupe aleke is. If, the, if it's an insect, is it a bird? Mm -hmm. Could be a bat for all I know. Yeah. Um, so when we, so that's a good lesson to, even if it says ino ona manu or names of birds, that we may be dealing with things that we don't call birds today. And these could be lists of all kinds yeah. of different categories. So you're really talking about like this is a perspective. It is an old. It is not just a Hawaiian old perspective. It's an old Pacific perspective because other places in the Pacific categorize flying creatures in the in the same way. Not everybody, but mm -hmm. a lot of people do. So can we talk about that a little bit? Like how problematic is that? That you would have somebody like Koloko Komaile who would look at these species and his you know innate relationship with his space, and you know have a perspective to order yeah. this Ike and these species in particular way, I immediately kind of fast forward to today and see a huge conflict in that. Is that is that an actual conflict? The fact that we have so many modern ways to order, you know, order Ike, how much of a problem is that? I mean, I don't, well, I think it's only a problem in, and as such as it makes it more difficult for us to understand things that people like Koloko Komaile are trying to tell us. And well, maybe it's also a problem in that, you know, when we are set to think in a particular way, mm -hmm. in this case, Western ways, mm -hmm. our actions probably also are going to be Western as well. Right. But it, it's really, I think it, it's a really good exercise for us to try to think in the way that someone like Koloko Komaile is thinking um, one, because it, it brings us to a closer place to our ancestors and to the land. Mm -hmm. But I think also it helps us to have more perspective in mm -hmm. general, mm -hmm. to understand that there is diversity in the way the world is, mm -hmm. and to have empathy in a different way for other people and the world around us in general. Do you find that in the scientific community that there is resistance to kind of open it up their scientific methods and minds to this kind of ordering? Oh, definitely. Um, it's interesting because it's, it's, it's almost like there's, there's a couple of different camps these days in the scientific community where there are scientists who are open to looking at these um, traditional native ways of thinking mm -hmm. um, that are not, you know, the, the traditional Western way of thinking or looking at things, right. whether it's a taxonomy or some other system of knowledge, some other epistemology. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are people who are very like, no, it must be <laughs> the Linnaean taxonomy. It must be right. um, the way that we were trained in our university. And that conflicts, the, the, that camp is stronger 
Um, and yeah. I've experienced a little bit of of that conflict myself when I try to, you know, publish papers and go right. put myself out there where sometimes they react a little strongly, which is kind of funny. Um, Do you they find feel that, threatened. Yeah, well, <laughs> I would imagine that you've experienced that there could be also dismissive of what you're saying. Yeah, they can be dismissive of that. Um, I, I think it's appropriate to be dismissive of, of what I'm saying sometimes because for me, it's like, who am I? I'm not Koloko Kamaile. I'm just looking at his right. stuff. But they're not looking at it that way. They're looking at it in the way of who who are these native people to be saying these things, uh, which is not appropriate, right? Interesting. Um, yeah, no. Yeah. That's not appropriate. So there's a lot of work to be done and there's value in looking at these things and trying to understand our native ways of thinking um, and trying to remember them and keep them alive for us. So thank goodness there are a few people who wrote things down like Koloko Komaile where we have some of this. One more thing I want to point out. Yep. Um, about this that may or may not be relevant. You might want to mm -hmm. cut this out. Um, looking at these names, mm -hmm. you know, there are, one thing to consider is Koloko Komaile's perspective, not only as a Hawaiian and a Hawaiian of a particular age, mm -hmm. but as a person from Kona mm -hmm. um, and from where he's at and wherever he's getting this knowledge from, mm -hmm. which maybe Kona may not be. Right. Um, and looking at, for example, the name Evi and Evi Polena here. Uh -huh. And even the, the name Olokele. Mm -hmm. So, Evi is known to be a synonym for the Evi, which is mm -hmm. a bird I think most people know. Yeah, red, I'm a beautiful common. bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, Evi Polena is a kind of Evi. It is okay. a specific life stage for the Evi, one of I the, see. the juvenile life stages. Mm -hmm. Olokele is also a name for a life stage of the Evi. And it's also a completely different name for the Evi in some places in Hawaii. Oh, interesting. And yeah, it, that gets really confusing. And then the name Eevee sometimes doesn't refer to the red bird Eevee. It can refer to a green bird that is a completely different species on some islands. So you really don't know what he was looking at. So it's, a, yeah, there's a little bit of a question of like, whose perspective is he is he showing here? Is it the perspective of people from this island where they're probably talking about life stages? Or is it the perspective of someone from Oahu where Eevee might be a completely different bird? Or is it mm -hmm. the perspective of someone from Kauai where Olokele is specifically the bird most people call Eevee? And I know this is probably getting confusing and is a lot. No, I can immediately um, see all the different things this list could be. Yeah. So the best thing to me is to think about, okay, who he, is he as a person? Mm -hmm. What most likely is his perspective given what we know about him and what, where he comes from? And that will tell us a little bit more about what these birds even are. That's a really good point. I appreciate that because then... Those are parameters in which you would use to read into the list. Yeah. And you really should read into the list because there is a lot of intention given in these orders and subgroupings that could be in these larger lists, right? Yeah. And and I mean, I could go on and on, but there's birds that are not in here. Mm, Why aren't they in here? Mm. And there's a couple of birds that, if I'm interpreting cor it correctly, are mm -hmm. foreign birds like Palahu, turkeys. Unless there was an old bird named Palahu as well, for which we've named turkeys. But I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. So one more question I have for you is just, um, you know, why do you think he chose? So he did a few of these, you know, taxonomies. Yeah. Not, this isn't the only one. Um, but, you know, he chose to put Manu, Limu, and uh, Kahakai, or Nai Apili Kahakai, all in the same taxonomy publication do you think do you have any thoughts on why why he may have made those choices i can guess okay um i don't really know but i my guess is that these are hmm, gee i don't know part of it could be that these are wild things oh interesting i know that he published another list where he's giving a, a list of plants correct and that includes things that are cultivated, but, right. which is different than this. Uh, but I, I think in well, one possibility, a different possibility is that limu are considered ia in a sense, uh, mm. uh, as in food, I think. Mm -hmm. So maybe this, and in one sense, you could also call birds ia, I think, and as in, uh, uh, an animal of some sort. 
kaiyamekai. Um, yeah, like that you're eating meat and potatoes kind of thing. Yeah, right? so maybe he maybe he's viewing it from that that perspective of these are things that should you eat them would be uh, on your that plate. E- e- uh, yeah, category. And, yeah, rather than I, and maybe that's why all of the plants, including the cultivated plants, are together. Maybe he's considering them I. So there's a dichotomy there. Yeah, so there could be a larger grouping. Yeah. That he's grouping under and then grouping within the list. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How interesting though. Like it's sort of it's a it's seemingly a simple list, but it actually has a lot of EK or knowledge in it. That you could read into it. That you it. could read yeah. into it or pull apart or really kind of over time unpack. Yeah, there's a ton more I'm sure we could talk about. That's super interesting though. I really appreciate you taking the time to shed some light on that for us. Mahalo. Yeah, mahalo. Mahalo.